descriptive introduction of the silent weapon. Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction, explosion, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnate instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life. That is, unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon, and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feeling in a rational way, or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help, and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence, and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. GPT-4 is not actually a human imitator, it is a human predictor. And if you have something that can predict what the next word is, you can then misuse it as a thing that generates imitative text by repeatedly predicting what a human would say in that situation. But it's not actually like a text generator, it's a text predictor. Theoretical introduction. Give me control over a nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, 1743 to 1812. Today's silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered, succinctly expressed, and effectively applied by the quoted Mr. Mayor Amschel Rothschild. Mr. Rothschild discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. He, of course, did not think of his discovery in these 20th century terms, and to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution, the rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally, the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of the world economy. If there's any meaning to the word magic, you might, dis you might use it for a strategy that uses facts about the environment you don't know, such that even after you see it happen, you still can't understand why it happened. When a chess-playing computer defeats you, you can at least follow the chess rules. It understood the logical structure of the game rather than the rules. It understood the implications of the rules better than you did, but once it's actually played out, you can understand the rules that apply at each point. Air conditioner level magic is when, even having seen all the actions it took, you can't understand why you lost. Step up from, from just the chess level. Requires something that can figure out facts about the environment that you yourself did not know. Mr. Rothschild's Energy Discovery what Mr. Rothschild had discovered was the basic principle of power, influence, and control over people as applied to economics. That principle is, when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people, inductance, with people corresponding to a magnetic field, into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth instead of real compensation. They would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for, so long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Mr. Rothschild loaned his promissory notes to individual and to governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scarce, tighten control of the system, and collect the collateral through the obligation of contracts. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to ignite a war, 
Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. That government which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. Collection of debts was guaranteed by economic aid to the enemy of the debtor. The profit derived from this economic methodology mad Mr. Rothschild, all the more able to expand his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be printed by government order beyond the limits, inflation, of backing in precious metal or the production of goods and services. So the question, how would an AI shut you down, is like the question of what does it know that you don't that enables it to defeat you? And of course, the, you know, the primary answer is, I don't know, it knows more than I do. <clears throat> but you can still look at places you don't know something and be like, I bet something smarter than me could figure that out. For the more poorly understood a part of reality is, the more likely that something smarter than you will have magic about that piece of reality. Apparent capital as paper inductor. In this structure, credit, presented as a pure element called currency, has the appearance of capital, but is in effect negative capital. Hence, it has the appearance of service, but is in fact indebtedness or debt. It is therefore an economic inductance instead of an economic capacitance, and if balanced in no other way, will be balanced by the negation of population, war, genocide. The total goods and services represent real capital called the gross national product. And currency may be printed up to this level and still represent economic capacitance. But currency printed beyond this level is subtractive, represents the introduction of economic inductance, and constitutes notes of indebtedness. War is therefore the balancing of the system by killing the true creditors, the public which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency gave him the power to rearrange the economic structure to his own advantage, to shift economic inductance to those economic positions which would encourage the greatest economic instability and oscillation. The final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computing equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillations created by price shocking and excess paper energy credits. Paper inductance inflation. Human brain. How does hypnosis work? You know, the current version doesn't seem to work on everyone, but like what actually goes on in the brain? I don't know. Optical illusions are like sort of near the surface of reality, the surface of perceptual reality, like just like shapes on paper. After images, if you stare really hard in the light and look away, for a bit there'll be a little blob in your, in your vision that isn't there. If you understood better how human brains work, are there things I could say to you now that would, you know, like activate some patch of neurons over and over in a way that they wouldn't usually lose, the equivalent of a very bright, staring at a very bright light, until they got tired. And then, like, I give you a new thing to say and it, like, routes stuff through the area that I just tired out in some tiny little patch, tiny little chunk of your brain. You know, generates an optical illusion there, but not a visual optical illusion, a semantic optical illusion. You like suddenly believe a thing that's out, that, you know, somebody looking out would be like, what, why, why did he say that that followed? Why is that true? Um, and, you know, so, you know, maybe the way that looks is you expose an, a human to an AI, and the AI like talks to them to a bit and it updates a model of how their brain works, which we don't understand at all. And, Pretty soon the human starts like agreeing with ridiculous things the AI is saying and you have no idea why. General energy concepts. In the study of energy systems, there always appears three elementary concepts. These are potential energy, kinetic energy, and energy dissipation. And corresponding to these concepts, there are three idealized, essentially pure physical counterparts called passive components. One, in the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of potential energy is associated with a physical property called elasticity or stiffness and can be represented by a stretched spring. In electronic science, potential energy is stored in a capacitor instead of a spring. This property is called capacitance instead of elasticity or stiffness. 2. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of kinetic energy is associated with a physical property called inertia or mass 
and can be represented by a mass or a flywheel in motion. In electronic science, kinetic energy is stored in an inductor, in a magnetic field, instead of a mass. This property is called inductance instead of inertia. 3. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of energy dissipation is associated with a physical property called friction or resistance and can be represented by a dash pot or other device which converts energy into heat. In electronic science, dissipation of energy is performed by an element called either a resistor or a conductor, the term resistor being the one generally used to describe a more ideal device, for example wire, employed to convey electronic energy efficiently from one location to another. The property of a resistance or conductor is measured as either resistance or conductance reciprocals. In economics, these three energy concepts are associated with economic capacitance, capital, money, stock inventory, investments in buildings and durables, etc. Economic conductance, goods, production flow coefficients, economic inductance, services, the influence of the population of industry on output. All of the mathematical theory developed in the study of one energy system, for example, mechanics, electronics, etc., can be immediately applied in the study of any other energy system, for example, economics. So it's like, first of all, things that a superintelligent might be predictably be able to do, synthesize a pathogen, where every, where, which is like super contagious, but not lethal. Just everybody on Earth, you know, sneezes a few times, and it's like super duper contagious, but all it doesn't make you sneeze a couple of times. It, it, it's, it's not fatal. Um, it, you know, no, no significant efforts are putting into stopping this, like, cold that sleeps around the, around the world and doesn't seem to really hurt anybody. And then once, like, you know, like, 80% of the human species has been infected by colds like that, it turned out that it made, like, a little change in your brain somewhere. And now if you play a certain tone at a certain pitch, it will become very suggestible. So Breakthrough. The aviation field provided the greatest evolution in economic engineering by way of the mathematical theory of shock testing. In this process, a projectile is fired from an airframe on the ground and the impulse of the recoil is monitored by vibration transducers connected to the airframe and wired to chart recorders. By studying the echoes or reflections of the recoil impulse in the airframe, it is possible to discover critical vibrations in the structure of the airframe which either vibrations of the engine, or aeolian vibrations of the wings, or a combination of the two, might reinforce resulting in a resonant self-destruction of the airframe in flight as an aircraft. From the standpoint of engineering, this means that the strengths and weaknesses of the structure of the airframe, in terms of vibrational energy, can be discovered and manipulated. Application in Economics To use this method of airframe shock testing in economic engineering, the prices of commodities are shocked, and the public consumer reaction is monitored. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computers, and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. It is by this process that partial differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household, and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry, dissipative consumer structure. Then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated, and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated computer-regulated social energy bookkeeping system. Eventually, every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences. Such knowledge guaranteed by Computer Association of Consumer Preferences, Universal Product Code, UPC, zebra-striped pricing codes on packages, with identified consumers, identified via association with the use of a credit card, and later a permanent tattooed body number invisible under normal ambient illumination. And you're like, no, you don't get it. Stockfish knows that. Stockfish knows that if it takes your rook with its queen, you'll take the queen with the bishop. You know, Stockfish sees everything in the board you can see and much more. The kid there has like failed to carry out the basic operation of really putting himself in the shoes of stockfish that does not want him to win at chess. So, you know, similarly like, well, can we just turn it off? It has thought of that. It will not give you a sign that makes you want it to turn it off before it is too late for you to do that. The, the movie plot would be about the people in the woods who miss the, the mind control cold and, you know, then come up with some clever clan. If that were a thing that is possible, the superintelligence knows that.
sending out drones to look for the people in the woods. And when it, it finds them, it's not going to like attack them via some method where they can win fighting back so the movie can keep going. It's just gonna like bomb the entire site flat or whatever, if there's any chance of them winning. And th but this, again, is still not the real danger. Why? Because life itself is not the top of technology. Protein life is not the top of technology.